it's not my program, it's not, I am not my own, I bought with a price, and whatever I do, I do according to what he's telling me to do. Okay, so, I have a solar here which, um, because we got a, and this, uh, and, um, this is a, song that says there was one who was willing to die in my stead, and I'm going to say, Thank you. 
which went to the cross for the carried my sins within here. We thank the Lord for the one who is willing. And he said the other day, he said, the Lord said, you shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. Let me take a sip here on this to chew my throat a little bit. Okay, so ask me why should we talk about thy kingdom come? You know, from a child, we learn to say the Lord's Prayer. And um, I don't have to tell you how to say the Lord's Prayer because I'm pretty sure everybody knows how to say the Lord's Prayer. And I want us to, you know, sometimes people talking and you hear them say, you could talk from now till kingdom come, right? And after a while, people, even people who don't believe in God, they, they don't um, have any interest in serving God. You hear them saying some things, these things come out of the word of God. And they don't understand what they're talking about. Now the scripture says here, in Luke chapter 11, and it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, as in earth. That is in Luke. Now what does it say in, Mark, in Matthew? Jesus taught them in Sabbath to pray, saying, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in heaven, as it is in earth. Right? That will be done in earth, as it is in heaven. So about that. And he said, give us your daily bread. Now, you know, what really happens in the world today, even people who are Christians, they have things set up differently. Many times you might hear somebody say that the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God. Right? And sometimes when you talk about the kingdom, it's like some people are like, what do you mean about kingdom? But you, you said it. You said it all the while. Do you think these things were written in the Bible by accident? I'm thinking about a kingdom? Why are you going to have a kingdom without you have a king? Right? And, and how are you going to have a, a king without a kingdom? The Bible said that when the Lord appeared before Pilate, he asked him if he was the king of the Jews. And he said, you know, he said, my kingdom is not of this world. But he said, my king, he said, I am a king, yes. But my kingdom is not yet. So I have a kingdom. You read it in the Bible. Right? It's there that Jesus has a kingdom, that he's a king. Why is he going to be a king? The, this, the, the wise man said, where is he that is born king of the Jews? Right? King without a kingdom, he must have a kingdom. Right? And because he has a kingdom, then he must have a reign. A time when he is actually in charge of his kingdom. Sitting on his throne. So all of these things are fundamental to salvation. And yet still many people who are supposed to be Christians, they don't even have any connection with these things. When you talk about a kingdom, it's like, hey, what are you talking about? Okay? And before I go further, I'm going to thank those who are joining um, the broadcast live right now and of course those who will be watching it later on. So we thank God. The, um, it says here, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in heaven as it is in earth. In earth as it is in heaven. 
And then Jesus said, give us this dear daily bread. Okay? Now we learn these things from our children and I think people jump over that part about the kingdom and get down to eating, you know, to the table with the food and the drink. Give us their daily bread. Alright? Yes, you, you will always be, oh, you always want to ask God, yeah, we want to have something to eat, right? And you know the other part talk about and forgive us our debtors as Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who are indebted to us. Right? That's another part people sometimes jump over. Right? But the part that has to do with the kingdom, if you have a child of God, you must know that Jesus has a kingdom. He does a king. Just as I said to you, all of the, the Lord's going to judge the world. You know? Right? Because they keep talking about him coming as a baby as a king. King how? What? What? King in a basket? In a manger? Born in a manger, yes, but the king, okay? So he must have a kingdom. And, and, and then some of you tell say that his kingdom was in heaven. He already had that kingdom set up. So it couldn't be that he's talking about, right? What he's talking about is this earth, which has been taken over by the rebel king named Satan, right? Which has to be brought into subjection to brought into um, alignment with heaven that's why he said thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven so he doesn't need a kingdom to be organized or set up in heaven what is in heaven is already set and everything is in order there what he needs to set in order is what's going on down on earth here Okay, and if you're a child of God, if you really want to be saved, um, and if you really want to be with this king, then you must understand about that he has a kingdom. Okay, and this is not Jehovah's Witness teaching, it's not Sunday Adventist teaching, it's not whoever teaching, this is just the Bible straight up. Okay, you say it all the while. Right? Sometimes people are like, oh well, you know, you hear about kingdom. That's oh that, that's a JW. They always talking about a kingdom. But why would you let them alone be talking about a kingdom? When it is right here. Right? So it doesn't matter what church you belong to or whatever you believe in, you must believe what is, is said here. Moreover, you said all the while. See your own words condemn you. Or save you. Whichever one. So there is a kingdom, right? And, you know, there's another thing that the Lord was showing me about, about this kingdom is that what the most popular, or what maybe the most famous piece of music they have in the world today is the one that said, that's a, the hallelujah chorus. It says hallelujah, hallelujah. But it says, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Right? That's why I say to you, people will go, will cram into an, um, one of those places for here, a philharmonic orchestra, play this music, and, oh, it says a masterpiece. I mean, this is, I mean, so grand. Yeah, but do you know what it is saying to you? Right? Somebody is celebrating by saying hallelujah, and he's saying, for the Lord God, omnipotent reigneth. Right? So that's what a king does. A king reigns. Right? Hallelujah for the Lord God may protect reigns. Right? And so there is a kingdom that the Lord has set up. Right? His kingdom is in heaven. Right? But he wants the kingdom to be also on earth. And that's the reason why we want to look at Daniel chapter 2 because Nebuchadnezzar had a a dream. He couldn't remember what the dream was, and he was mad with his people, his, uh, his wise men, because he wanted them to tell him the dream and the interpretation. Right? Now, they thought he was crazy because he said, but this cannot work. He said, King, but 
How much we tell you your dream? I mean, that's your dream. You should know your dream. You tell us your, your dream, then we tell you what it means. But the king was 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 anxious. He knew something was wrong, and he, he it's like he didn't want like it was a warning to him that something was going to happen in this kingdom, and then it should happen, and then he wouldn't be prepared for it. So he decided that if they couldn't tell him the dream and the interpretation, he was going to wipe out all of them. It's just kill out all of them. He said, I mean, you are able to tell me the interpretation, and I'm giving you a challenge now. Tell me my dream and my and the interpretation. And they said, no, king, how can that be done? Right? Now Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were in the Babylon at the time. They were considered wise men. Excuse me. The Bible said they were ten times wiser than all the wise men in, in, the, in the realm. Yet the king didn't call them when he wanted to know what was going on. He called the people who were Chaldeans. These were the officials. But Daniel, they were captive. They were taken captive from, it, from, from Jerusalem. And so they, they don't have that recognition like the men who were um, born there, who, were, who went to school there, they went to university, whatever it is, they're scholars. Of, of um you know of, of Babylon. They were celebrating scars, but they could not tell the dream, not interpretation. So but when the, the decree went out to kill all of the wise men, then they came looking for Daniel. So Daniel was saying, Hey, what's going on? I mean come kill me for what? What did I do? They said, Well, we got honor from the king to kill all the wise men. So but for what? What what did why are they being killed? And he said, Well told him what was the matter. Daniel said to him, he said, hold on, hold on. Um, let me go see the king myself. And he went to the king and he asked the king, he said, give me some time. Let me work on this one. Okay. I wasn't there when this thing came up, but I know God is not going to allow us to be killed because these men couldn't tell you your, your dream and interpretation. And so we're going to seek the face of God. And that's what children of God should do. So they went seeking the face of God, and the Bible said in a night vision, the thing was revealed to, um, to Daniel, right? Daniel chapter 2, um, verse, um, verse um, he said, um, oh, Daniel chapter 2, let me get that verse, because I love that verse. It says, then was... Yeah, that verse 2 verse 19. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changed the times and the seasons. He removed kings and set up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealed the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O the God of my fathers, who hath given me wisdom and might, and hast made known unto me now what we desire of thee, for thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. So Daniel was praising God. He said, Lord, you came true for me here. Now we won't be dying with all of these men. Okay, we now know what is the king's matter. And he went to the, the same man who had come to, um, to kill him. He said, bring me to the king now. Let me go. We are ready. We are ready. Right? So he went into the king. And when the king asked him, he said, like, do you know what you're doing? I mean, do you know this, this secret? Um, and Daniel said to him that the secret the wise men and all of these uh, Chaldean astrologers and soothsayers and all these magicians, they don't know. But he said there was a God in heaven that revealed a secret. Right? And so God in heaven revealed a secret to him. And he told him what would happen in the last of days. So what was happening with Nebuchadnezzar's dream was that he saw a, 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 um, is that, is like a, a free thing of kingdoms. You know? 
You ever see like when they show like the domino effect, you see the domino just tapping down like that, right? So, um, the, um, Nebuchadnezzar saw in, in his vision like a domino effect thing of kingdom just falling down, right? And that was something that terrified him because that's telling him that his kingdom was not going to last, right? And if my kingdom is not going to last, so what can I do about it? Because maybe I can stop it from toppling down, right? And these wise men are not telling me what's going on, right? And maybe it's going to happen tonight. But suppose it's happened tonight and I'm not ready, right? And I'm going to be killed and my whole kingdom just taken away from me. And these men won't tell me what's going on. So, you know, sometimes you, you wake up a dream and it, it rests in your spirit. It, it troubles you, right? And you know something is wrong, right? You just know something is wrong just by the way it comes to you, right? And it, it works that way too. You can know something is right. There's a peace and, and, a, and a rest that you know that something is right, right? A God is come answering your prayer and something good is going to happen, right? It happened both ways. But why is this something that has to do with, um, with trouble like this now? There comes the fear and the panic. And, the, and as I said, this kingdom, what the kingdom always wants is their dynasty. That as long as they start a kingdom, that their son will sit on the throne. And then the son's son, and it would go on like that, as people often said, or forever. That's the thing that, that, that kings like. Okay? And they would do anything to stop anyone who would try to stop the dynasty, to, um, to in, in, inter, uh, intercept their dynasty, right? The quickest thing, psh, they kill somebody. Quick, psh, because that one is trying to take away the throne, right? Yet still, it, it, would ha it does happen. It did happen, right? So here we come now. Daniel begins to tell him what the dream means, what the dream is. And told him that you went to bed, and he not only told him he told him what he was thinking about when he went to bed. <laughs> and so, so you were thinking about your kingdom. You were thinking about the future. What's going to happen when I'm dead? Um, how long is my kingdom going to last? What's going to What's going to happen with my children? You know, people go to bed like that, thinking about many things, and thinking of the future. And as they're thinking about these things, the Bible said, God decided, well, I'm going to show you something. Okay? I'm going to show you something. And so the king wakes up. He said, no. No. Ah. And then he's trying to put the pieces together. It's not coming to him at all. Right? I'm up to you. You have a dream and you know something. He's trying to put it together. He said, Lord, man. Where did that dream go? You know, because sometimes when the phone rings, the phone just takes you out of the dream and you just don't even remember. Maybe you answer the phone uh, and sometimes it's not, even, it's not even anything important either. Or it might be something important. But then when you finish, now you're trying to go back. So what was I dreaming about again? And you say, Lord of mercy, I can't remember one thing. Right? And sometimes, go through the whole day. Right? I remember being a victim of a pickpocket, right? And I had a dream about the thing, you know, and it's after this something happened to me on the road. And I said, but, oh, Lord of mercy, and I remember that was what the dream was, what I was having, right? But I, it was too late, right? They were gone with my money, all right? My money, I wanted to pay my light bill, okay? So I'm just saying to you, <laughs> I'm just saying to you, I don't remember any other, any other experience like that before that, after, Thank God, but I'm just saying to you that, you know, having a dream and you can't remember what a dream is, it can, it can scare you, right? Especially if something about it tells you that something is wrong. So Nebuchadnezzar got these men in and they couldn't tell him, so Daniel come and he's telling him. So he tells him that you saw an image, right? God showed you an image, and the image, the head was of gold, right? Was of gold, and then he said the breast and the arms, right, were made of silver, right down here, right. 
and down here the abdomen was here was made of of brass or bronze, right? Then the legs now were made of iron, right? Iron, right? And then down to the feet, the ankle there, they were made with the iron, but the iron now was not pure iron anymore. It was mixed with clay. Right? So, he tells him what the dream is. And then he said to him that, uh, let's, let's read a little more so we know something about the kingdom of God. It says here, his legs were verse 23, were of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest uh, till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and brake them in pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver and the gold broke the pieces together, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. So, that's what he said. He said there was an image and there was a stone. There was an image. The first metal was, was the, the gold. And then came the silver. Then came the, bra the, the brass and the bronze. And then came down to the iron. Excuse me. Now Daniel is saying that while he was, he said you saw, you are watching, excuse me, you are watching what was going on. And while the image was there standing, suddenly you saw, you know, you know nowadays there are these things you can see like on TV. You see something just happening, right? But this was, was not TV. Okay, so a stone cut out. You didn't see anybody cutting it. It was like the handwriting on the wall. Not even like that really, because at least it's the part of the hand. But they just saw the stone just cut out of the mountain without hands. It just coming out. And when the stone came out, it slammed the image like that. Right? So hard that the, the image not only fell, but it shattered to pieces. Right? Shattered the pieces, I mean like, 